What's up guys, today we're going to be learning about the Iron Age and I'm here at a real life blacksmith forge to learn about how metal weapons, tools and objects were made in the Iron Age. We have some real life blacksmiths here behind me and at the end of the video I'm going to show you how you can make your own metal work at home. Let's go! The Bronze Age came to an end when people realized how to smelt iron and with it tools, weapons, armor and more. Rocks are made out of all sorts of things and sometimes you can find tiny pieces of metal inside of them. Although you can't make a weapon from tiny pieces of metal and we don't want to keep making weapons out of rocks. That was done in the Stone Age and that was so 2000 years ago. To get iron out of a rock it was smelted in a furnace over and over and over again until it was just pure iron. No rocks, no nothing, just iron. After this, you're left with a big piece of iron. But how do we turn this into a weapon, tool, armor, or object? How did people actually make uh, metal into a weapon or an object like this? Well, that was the job of the blacksmith, and we're going to learn that here at Money Penny's Forge today. Blacksmith was to get the metal really, really hot. The hotter the metal, the more flexible it becomes, and it makes it easier to shape into whatever way you want it to be. The blacksmith would have put the metal into a fire pit like the one behind me here. To make the fire pit hot, they would have pumped oxygen into it using something called a bellow. Here at Money Pennies, they do not use bellows anymore. We have more modern methods, and they're using an electric pump to pump oxygen into the fire pit. Once the metal was hot enough, the blacksmith used a pair of tongs to pick up the metal so he doesn't burn his hand. He then transferred the roasting hot metal to an anvil like this one behind me. The anvil was used to help shape the metal when hitting a hammer on top of it. Go. Hot enough, that's good to go. So set it on the diamond, like I say, not on the flat. Just flatten down. You can see what it is halfway there. It's now because it's flat, it should heat quicker. The physics, a little to this side towards me. I'm not showing all those tough paint marks, but I'll get rid of that in a moment. You can see it's a little bit asymmetrical, but it's, but it's a nicer leaf shape anyway. When he finished, the blacksmith put the red hot metal into a water bath. This instantly cooled down the metal and hardened it so that it was no longer flexible and bendy. Now let's learn how to make our very own Iron Age metalwork. So for this metalwork activity we're going to be making some sort of Anglo-Saxon brooch I suppose and to do that we're going to be using some scissors, glue, these little gem patterny things, some tin foil, a yogurt lid but you can use any lid for it really and some blue tack, should I say white tack. So the first thing I'm going to do is make a 3D pattern on top of the lid before I put the tin foil on top and I'm going to do that using my straw and blue tack. I 
I'm going to roll my blue tack into little sausages. It's time to cover it with tin foil to make it look more metallic. Nice feeling. A little, little rip here, but nothing that a blacksmith can fix. First, I'm going to trim off the excess. <laughs> the brooch of a thousand truths. Yes. That's okay. Now all we have to do is decorate this bad boy with some beautiful gems. And here we have our final metalwork piece, our medieval or Anglo-Saxon brooch. And there's only one last thing we have to do. So we've come to the end of our video about the Iron Age and blacksmithing. If you enjoyed this video, give it a like and be sure to subscribe to my channel for more cool and interesting educational videos. As always, thanks for watching. See you next time.